Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 4 of Broken Bridge Studio. Today we are going to take this yellow heart blank, which I showed in an earlier video, and uh, work on turning it into a bowl. So uh, I made the decision to mount this on the faceplate that came with the, uh, the lathe. Uh, and to do that I'm using these machine screws, and uh, what I'm really just making sure of here is that it is perfectly centered. Now the machine plate or the faceplate is just a little bit smaller than the overall block. The block is a six inch block and that machine plate is about five and three quarters inches. So I just have to make sure it's really dead center that this thing is going to work right. Uh, once it is, I'm using a punch, uh, marking the holes, and then securing the plate with these screws. Now the screws are going into what eventually will be the hollowed out section of the bowl so that you're drilling holes in something that eventually you're going to be carving away anyway. Now the problem was uh, some of those screws were a little too long. Now, lesson learned, uh, and I'll uh, fix that in the future. Uh, but moving forward, here we go. Starting to use this roughing gouge, and we are starting to knock down uh, the outside edge of this uh, blank. So um, this is the yellow wood blank. I picked it up at Woodcraft. And right now the roughing gouge is just really just going to town, trying to knock down these corners even more than uh, than they are now. Now, that's why I took off the corners with the chop saw, just to make this a little bit easier. Uh, but this is a hard wood, and uh, as you can see, obviously, this is also very much sped up. Um, because this was about two hours, maybe two and a half hours total of work. Um, so I can't obviously show all that on YouTube. Plus, you don't want to watch all that. But it's pretty interesting to see the process that I kind of went through here. And one of the things I really learned is that my uh, chisels uh, were getting dull. And um, I had to learn how to sharpen them. So I had to get a grinding wheel set up and a jig set up and make sure that I learned how to sharpen these chisels appropriately. And I think I did. So I got this down to the round and I'm going to use that Nova Chuck to mark it in. That's where the footer is going to be. And that's about the size of the base of the foot that I want uh, for the bowl. So now I got to get that foot down. So I need to start carving it down. I'm using a couple different things here. I'm using skews, I'm using the flat scraper, um, I'm using what I can to kind of just knock this wood down the best I can, and it is a painstakingly slow process. So eventually here I'm going to uh, probably turn off the camera or run out of battery, one of the two, and uh, get it down to so where you can just see the foot. But as you can see here, it's just a slow process, either using the pointer or the skews to just really knock this wood out um, and try to get this work down to about the appropriate size of the footer. Uh, that I wanted. Uh, it was a little trial and error. The skews knocked out and tore out some sections, uh, but luckily those were pieces that got carved away later on, so no harm, no foul. Until we get to here, and that's where the foot looks like, and then I started to really make some mistakes. So this was the bowl gouge. This is the very first time I was ever actually working on the faceplate of a rotating stock, and uh, never done this before. This was the very first time, and I'm messing this up horribly. So as you can see, I'm getting tear outs after tear outs after tear outs, and bowl gouge is just jumping all over the place, and all that you know, the tearing of the wood there. That's that's the result of that bowl gouge just not having the right cutting profile. Unfortunately, it was uh, shipped to me, you know, with the normal profile for a bowl gouge, but I guess everybody uh, out there uses what's called a fingernail profile, and that's something I had to carve and cut into that bowl gouge using the grinder wheel as I was sharpening it. So it's there now and it worked a lot better. You'll see later on I use it on the inside of the bowl and it makes such a huge difference. But the goal here is that I'm really just trying to get that hollow uh, out from underneath that foot because eventually I need to have my Novichuk expand its jaws into there, grab the inside, and expand in. And not only does it have to grab the inside, it has to grab inside in a kind of a concave manner. So there's an angle uh, inwards inside that foot edge that I had to create. So I'm using that dovetail scraper right there, I'm using the pointer and the angled scraper, and really trying to get in there and, and get that knocked out. And eventually it works pretty well. I get the angle going and uh, I get pretty happy with the results. And uh, So there it is, there's the good foot, well, a somewhat good foot, and uh, now it's time to start shaping the bowl. So a little bit of fast forwarding again and here we go. We're going to knock down that bowl again using the rough gouge, uh, the roughing gouge. Um, and that's just to get that really, just the general shape going. And all of a sudden, you know, it really is starting to take shape as a real bowl. And I'm kind of impressed. I'm also, you know, completely covered in this awful wood. Yellowheart is a gorgeous wood, but it stinks like plastic cat pee when it's being cut or when it gets a little smoky. 
So this is just the most god-awful smell uh, that I'm dealing with here. And fine sawdust and a very ribbon-like cutting. So I know the, uh, that I'm doing the right thing because my arm is just getting completely covered in sawdust. But man, this wood stinks. So I'm looking forward to working on some cherry or some walnut in the future, which hopefully will have a little bit better aroma, which would be nice. So here we go. We're uh, getting the right profile down. I'm really, really happy with the results that I'm seeing here. And uh, I'm not thrilled again about that foot, but, you know, this is the first time. And uh, lessons are being learned, and that's a good thing. So, eventually here, I'm happy with this profile. And right about here, somewhere in here, we're going to wrap this up. And uh, get this thing switched over. So I'm using that fine scraper once again to really just work on that edge. Uh, this would also be where it would be handy to have a curved rest. That tool rest that I have there you see is straight. Uh, and something that would curve and follow the natural curve of that bowl would be a lot better. So here's the Novichuk. I've taken the faceplate off. I've attached the Novichuk. It's expanded inside the foot there. And I kind of look a little spastic. And there's the bowl gouge. Nice and sharpened up now. With new profile. A completely different front edge. That bowl gouge is a unique chisel. It really is just a long steel rod. Um, and it's important that you use that bowl gouge when you're working on the face of a bowl because it, uh, it doesn't have the narrow neck like the other chisels do. It is that long rod all the way through the handle, um, and so it has that large tang and can withstand the chopping forces that you might encounter when hitting the grain. Uh, so it's really important you never use the spindle gouge or roughing gouge on that front face. Once you do have some bowl profile going, then I switched over to what this is. This is actually a bowl scraper. And I picked these up. It's really a nice tool. It worked beautifully. So once I really started to get some of that uh, the, the, the collo going with the bowl gouge, this thing just uh, worked beautifully. Now you can see my pencil line on the uh, upper edge there. That's kind of what I'm working towards on that hollow. I eventually want to get that bowl hollowed out to about the thickness of that. And this bowl scraper is really allowing me to do that from the center up to that top edge and back and forth and just really working very slowly and methodically to just take off a little bit layer, a little layer by little layer, and uh, and do this. And just ribbons of wood are flying out at this point. That bowl scraper is is just knocking them out. I apologize for standing so much in front of the camera. I'm gonna have to find a better camera angle for filming bowl making. Uh, but um, you know this is working, and I was really happy with how this is starting to look. I was getting nervous that I was gonna have a, ch a chip out or a cut out or a breakout. I was nervous about that foot cracking and the Nova chuck failing and that bowl going and whipping across the room. So obviously I'm not standing directly in front of it at any point here. Um, but none of that happened. I was uh, pleasantly surprised to find out that the chuck worked beautifully. The bowl held on. It was nice and tight. And uh, there you go. I got it down to that pencil mark and a nice smooth interior. So time to sand. So starting with my low grit sandpaper, I'm in the sanding strips. Start working that around. There goes the pencil mark on that fine, on the top grit. And uh, eventually here I'm just going to work my way through all these sandpaper grits and get down to something that I like. Now at some point here and toward the end of the sanding, the battery is going to die. And uh, I'm not going to have the final product to show you, but the sanding of this took some time. And again, this is a hard wood, and so it really was something where I had to go in with a variety of different grits, starting at about 150, working my way up to about 650 on the sanding strips and then eventually moving on to sanding sponges and then the micro sanders uh, taking that all the way up to about 12,000 grit sanding and and as you see throughout this like the luster just really starts to pop and does a great job and then I screwed everything up and I tried to wax the damn thing so live and learn again I got some wax sticks and a new type of a polish thinking that it would be good for this light colored wood and uh, I gotta learn how to use this wax the right way because it just sort of clumped everything up together. Maybe it was too much sawdust on it, maybe there was something else going on, I'm not entirely sure. I gotta read up and see what the trick is with using this wax stuff. But um, the one thing you'll notice, and every time the bowl stops here, when I stop it and take a look, you'll see some rough patches inside and unfortunately those are the uh, screw holes. Those are the very ends of the screw holes. Right there you can sort of see that white section. So unfortunately I got those you know all the way hollowed out but the very tip of those screws was sort of uh, right in the area where my bowl was and I didn't want to hollow it anymore because I was afraid if I went too thin you'd start cutting in and losing the strength of that wood. 
Um, so this was really a call on my part to say, okay, you know, first bowl, uh, live and learn right at first time out the gate, and I can live with some the imperfections on the inside. Uh, but I learned how to carve out a bowl. I learned how to use the chuck. I really felt like this worked really, really well, and the sanding worked beautifully too. Like I'm literally seeing a luster starting to pop. Uh, those lights are starting to reflect in the turn, and when it stops, you can still see them. And it's just cool, you know. It's starting with a piece of wood and carving it away in such a way to create something like this. So, yeah, I learned a lot, and uh, eventually, I think the goal here will be to make some more of these. This lathe can take anything up to about an 8-inch bowl, and I think that would be fun to uh, keep going. So here's the finished product. So i got to say I'm happy about this. Uh, I love the grain. Yeah, there's that torn out foot, but you know what? It's got some character. And uh, this was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. And again, you know what? I'm really enjoying doing this. Uh, I think I found myself a new hobby. Thanks, guys, for coming in and checking us out. Bye.